Hi there, and thank you for your interest in Student Success Plan. In this brief video, I'm going to walk you through the journal and the action plan tools. I'm going to select a student, in this case, Mary Anderson. I'm going to select the action plan tool. We'll go through that first. The purpose of the action plan tool is to create uh, two things really, create a uh, quote unquote to-do list for the student uh, to give them uh, tasks or assign them tasks uh, that come out of an advisor's meeting and recommendations to a student. And secondly, to provide uh, referral sources or um, assistance uh, in the area of resources um, in which the student may need help. So I think these will become clear as we walk through, uh, as we walk through this. Once I open the action plan, I've got three tabs at the top. I've got the tasks plan, which gives me the tasks that have been assigned to the student. We've got a goals tab and a strengths tab. Uh, we'll spend most of our time on the tasks tab, but just to cover the goals and strengths quickly, the purpose of the goals and the strengths tabs are really for an advisor uh, during their conversations or interactions with a student to um, elevate or raise up some of the goals uh, during those discussions that the student may have. And this provides a way to document those goals. So really it just, play, it just provides a place where as the advisor is meeting with the student and discussing their various goals, they can put them down in writing here. Uh, it's one of many locations. Uh, you could put this also in the journal tool uh, and so forth, but uh, this provides a specific place if you uh, decide to use it for that purpose. The strengths is very similar. So uh, again, during the discussions between advisor and student, you know, it may become apparent to the advisor that the student has particular strengths, um, maybe in writing or verbal communication skills, or maybe they know a second language or uh, anything really. Um, you can simply add a strength here, um, put a little description, and assign a confidentiality level to that. I'll cover confidentiality levels when we get to the journal tool uh, in a little more detail. So those are really the purposes of the goals and the strengths tab. So back to the tasks tab. Um, if I'm an advisor and I'm meeting with a student uh, and I want to assign them, either refer them somewhere uh, for a further assistance or assign them a task to do, I can simply click the add task button. And I'm given uh, the add task screen. From there, I can search a category. Um, each of these dropdowns are completely customizable. In fact, all of the information you see uh, within the action plan uh, add task screen is customizable. So this is information that you are currently seeing. It just gives you a place in SSP to uh, filter category challenge or keyword. So let's say um, we're gonna talk to Mary today about career counseling. I select that and then it gives me a list of challenges. So I can, um, under career counseling, I can talk about grades. So maybe Mary is struggling with grades. If I select that challenge, as soon as I select that, I, have, I am listed uh, a number of different referrals here. Now, this is all customizable information. This is all information that you are likely providing to students um, who have, you know, who come to you for career counseling or have issues with their grades now. So um, it gives the challenge here at the left. It gives the name, uh, kind of the, the resource name. So you can take advantage of the learning lab, uh, take a student success course, um, you know, sign an academic petition, student judicial affairs, withdraw, or a study skills website. And you choose one or more of these as the advisor using your expertise on what the student really needs. And then you can assign one or more of these uh, tasks to the student. So to do that, I can simply grab one, drag it and drop it over here. Under the description, this is the description that you would give the student um, 
it usually contains a referral uh, of some sort, uh, a phone number, a website address, or maybe a department on campus, or even within the community uh, itself um, where the student can get some help. If there's a website link at all, you can uh, that would show up in this um, field here. And then a due date, uh, the due date uh, would typically, uh, the way SSP is configured, be seven days out. So this date would be April 4th, which is a week from today. And uh, again, confidentiality level, I'll cover that when we get to the journal tool uh, in a little more detail. So I can also assign, if I wanted to assign a second option or a second uh, task to the student, I can simply double click it and it would show up over here with the same information, the same due date, et cetera. If uh, the student also came to me and said they were having um, trouble paying for school, I could also select a different challenge here. And uh, this gives me the list that uh, has been input for different referrals or tasks uh, for a student. So I can uh, have the student um, you know, fill out a financial aid office application. So I can simply drag and drop that there. So it's really uh, very straightforward. Again, all of this information is information that you are likely current referring students to now. Uh, it's just put into SSP as a configuration, displayed under a specific challenge, and then can easily be assigned to a student by either double clicking or dragging and dropping. So once I am finished with uh, the list, I can save it. And what it'll do is it'll save it and it'll bring me back. Now, uh, Mary has quite a number of um, items here that are open, but the, uh, let me sort this, oh, just sort it by due date. So the three that uh, I added are the three here, financial aid office application, student success course, and academic petition. So um, I've got some buttons here. I can edit the task if uh, I wanna go back and uh, change anything. I can close the task. So if uh, Mary didn't close it uh, upon completion, but I met with her or I had some kind of interaction with her and she confirmed to me that it was closed, I could simply come in here, check the check mark, and this uh, would then be closed. The status would change to complete, as you can see down here. It would uh, enter a completed date and so forth. And then if I wanted to delete this, so let's say circumstances changed uh, or some other reason, and I wanted to delete this task altogether, uh, I could click the X and delete it. Uh, so that's a simple overview of action plan. Um, if I get too many here, I can show tasks that I've created myself uh, instead of another coach. Um, I can show only incomplete tasks. I can sort by any of these um, uh, column headings like I can do almost anywhere else within uh, SSP. Um, I can add another task if I need to. I can email this action plan and I can also print it out for the student. So uh, that is a quick overview of action plan. Next, I'm gonna jump over to the journal tool. So selecting the journal tool, I can see a list of previous journal entries here. I've got a modified date. Uh, I've got an entry date over here at the right. I can sort these columns um, just by clicking as I can do. I can also reorder them. So if I wanted an entry date at the left with a modified date next to it, um, I could do that. I can sort these columns really um, in whatever horizontal order uh, I would like. Down below, I've got some journal entry information. Down below here, I've got a free typing field. So I can simply type in there uh, to my heart's content. Uh, there's no limit as to how many characters uh, are in here. I can type a couple sentences, a couple bullet points, or I can type a few paragraphs if I needed to. I also have a, a bar here with the typical standard uh, text editing um, buttons, uh, very similar to like a Microsoft Word or any other uh, word processing program. So if I wanted to add a journal entry, I can click add. 
and it's gonna, all ad is gonna do really is populate today's date. Uh, and I can go and assign a confidentiality level. So I mentioned earlier that I would cover confidentiality levels in a little more detail. Um, what, let me give you a quick overview of um, how permissions and data is secured within SSP. So let's back up to various user roles and permissions because that's the first level of uh, data protection that SSP has. You can see over here at the right, there's a list of tools. These are standard tools in SSP for view by a coach with the possible uh, exception of accommodation, which is just here for demonstration purposes. So these are the typical tools that a coach may have available in SSP. This list is completely customizable. So if uh, you, know, you as an institution decided that maybe the email student or the documents tab or one of these other tools was not necessary for an advisor to see, um, the roles and permissions set up within SSP is very flexible. Uh, it's just a standard out of the box uh, with seven different roles uh, with permissions assigned, but those can be pared down to fewer than seven. And we can also add different roles in there. Um, and we handle that during the configuration and initial implement implementation process. So each user within SSP would be assigned a role. And in that role, they would be assigned certain tools. If a user did not have access to the journal tool, then they would not see journal in this list over here and therefore would not see any journal entry for any student. They wouldn't have access to the tool, so they would not see journal entries at all. The confidentiality level at that point would not mean anything because they don't even have access to the tool. The next level of pr data protection is for people that have access to the journal tool. So those without access to the journal tool cannot see any journal entry. Those without access to the journal tool cannot see any journal entry. However, those with access to the journal tool could see students' journal entries or advisors' journal entries for students. And that's where confidentiality level comes in. So here for demo purposes, I've provided a number of uh, just standard confidentiality levels. Um, we will work with you during the implementation process to set this up so that it makes logical sense and um, aligns the permissions according to um, your institution and the way you want it set up. So uh, an obvious uh, permission would be for everyone. So everyone includes everyone with access to the journal tool. Um, there are other permissions here, um, such as counselor, um, would only include advisors. So you could call this permission, say, advisors only. Um, and that means that anybody with the advisor role would have access to the journal tool and therefore would be able to see this journal entry but other roles that may have access to the journal tool would then not be able to see this journal entry. And I could even divide it down the, the confidentiality levels even further. So different subgroups of advisors, um, if those are configured within the application. So maybe uh, there's a certain college or a certain program advisors at your institution you could lock down the confidentiality levels so that only advisors within that particular group rather than the entire set of advisors would have access to the tool or access to the journal entry. And then if I wanted to get down even further, uh, only me. So if I put success coach or this could be titled advisor only, then my advisor login is the only login that would have access to this particular journal tool. So it provides a lot of flexibility. I'm going to go ahead and select everyone for the sake of uh, this demonstration, but that provides a little overview of how granular we can get with uh, permissions um, and protection of student data 
um, and possibly uh, private information. So once that's assigned, I can choose a source. This basically is a customizable list, and this is just uh, what was my, as an advisor's, interaction with a student. So let's say that I had a phone call with a student. Again, I could go in and you see that when I set the confidentiality level, my typing here had, uh, had erased. So um, it wasn't gonna stick unless I had a confidentiality level um, selected here. So again, this is just a free typing field. Um, so one note about journal entries, and this will lead me over to uh, talking about the track step detail here at the bottom right. Uh, journal entries um, in the past and in many applications are just like what I've described so far. They've got confidentiality levels and I can simply freely type within this box down here and this will uh, be saved and included in the student's file and can be, you know, uh, read in the future or accessed by anybody that has the proper roles and confidentiality levels to see it. The problem with that is a couple things. First thing is it's time consumed for kind of time consuming for me as an advisor to input this information in this field. I've got to spend minutes, uh, maybe as many as 10 to 15 to 20 minutes, depending on my conversation, recapping my conversation with the student and their feedback. That's time consuming. In addition, when I meet with this student again, if I do as an advisor, I might meet with them in two, three months, maybe six months, maybe a year from now. I've got to go back and re-import this information. So I've got to access the journal entry and I've got to go back and I've got to look and reread what I entered before and digest that information prior to my meeting with the student. So it takes not only time for me to uh, export this information into the application, but I've got to re-import it uh, into my mind before I meet with the student again. You do this multiple times, dozens of times, possibly a day, and it becomes a time-consuming um, procedure. The other disadvantage of a standard journal tool is, is that no one can report on information that is typed in this field. So uh, myself as an advisor, I can't pull a caseload report or anything else that gives me the information that I've typed in here. I've got to go back and reread it. And if I wanted to get any sort of reporting done, I'd have to go back in and reread hundreds of journal entries in order to compile some sort of report on what I'm talking to students about and so forth. So it really is not conducive to reporting whatsoever. So while there are some advantages of it, is it allows me to customize kind of what my um, thoughts are and things, it really has some significant disadvantages. And that's where the track step details comes in. So to help you get your mind around track step details, think of an outline. So think of, if I'm gonna create an outline, I'm gonna create a Roman numeral uh, one, and then my sub point in there is going to be a capital A. And then my sub point underneath capital A is going to be the number one. So track would be the top level, step would be a sub level, and detail would be a sub level of step. So if you think of that in that aspect, I'm going to choose my track. So let's say I want to talk to the, or I'm talking to the student about career coaching. So I select career coaching as my track. As soon as I do that, I get a custom set of steps that are laid out here. This information is all customizable during the implementation process. When I open up one of the steps, I get the details. So under career coaching, my first step is career assessment. And then the details under career assessment include review program choices, review the junk typology, and review student career goals. So that's the essential structure here of each of the track steps and details. Each one of these in the list of tracks would have separate uh, steps and details pertaining directly to the track that I chose. As I'm meeting with the student, 
I can open this. I've still got my free typing field here, but I can open this. And what this does is it gives me a very quick and easy way to document my conversation and interaction with the student. So if I've got a list of best practices here, and this would be the same for every coach uh, across the institution for career coaching, I can simply select three clicks and I've documented that I've reviewed the program choices, reviewed the junk typology, and reviewed students' career goals. I can also type over here, as I mentioned earlier, but now I don't need to type that I've completed these steps because I've simply checked these three boxes over here. The benefit of the track step detail um, really comes in when we look at the drawbacks or disadvantages of the free typing field. One of the additional benefits is, is that this, you as an institution can establish best practices for working with students on career assessment. So you can come together as a group, establish what the best practices are for the steps and the details, configure that within SSP for the career coaching track, and every advisor would see these steps and these details when they loaded the career coaching track. So what it does is it has a way of standardizing the interaction that you have. Once you've established best practices, you can establish uh, what those are, configure them in SSP, and then it's, a, it's really a task list as the advisors are working with students on each of the tracks. The second advantage is, is I know exactly what I reviewed with a student without typing a number of sentences or even paragraphs um, in the free typing field. Of course, I can update notes over here. Um, if there's something that wasn't covered in one of these details, I could put a quick note over here to um, subsidize the information here, but I don't have to type out multiple paragraphs in most cases. And then the third benefit, obviously, is I can report on this information. We cover reporting in the admin overview video, so I recommend you uh, review that video um, to get an overview of the various reporting that uh, SSP can provide. But one of those reports is a journal uh, report that will report on um, tracks, steps, and details. So once that's done, you can see that my next step is a follow-up, uh, so I could save this and schedule a follow-up with the student when they come back, uh, or even I could check this and say I've established a follow-up appointment with the student, uh, and then um, I can cover the intake session and such, uh, which would be my next steps in the advising process once I get back together with the student uh, in our next interaction. So I can save this, and you can see that I've got that up here. If I double click on it, you can see that uh, when I double click exactly what I had here as far as uh, tracks and steps are included and even um, the folders are open showing what I've completed up to this point and the intake session which isn't completed, the folder was closed. I know I need to access those details and that's my agenda for my next conversation with the student. Okay. Uh, so that gives you a brief overview of the action plan and journal tools. Uh, please see many of our other videos on other tools and features of SSP. Thanks for your time.